Hello! So today, um, I'm going to talk about recycling and trash collecting and that sort of thing in Japan. So, I don't know if you recycle or you don't recycle, but either way, after watching this video, you would feel much better about what you're doing and that you don't have to worry about all of this. So I've brought props with me here and off to the side that I'll show you. First, uh, when you move to a new place, you have to go to the government building and they have to give you one of these trash collection schedules. So basically on this sheet are all the cities and places located, I believe in all of Japan, on one side. Then the other side, oversized items in Japan, you have to pay to get collected. So in America, you can just leave your couch out and eventually someone will come pick it up. Here you have to pay, and it's per item. Each suitcase is 100 yen, so a dollar, for them to get rid of a suitcase. I mean, all of these are individual items. Um, double bed is 20 bucks to get rid of a mattress. You know, lawnmower, 10 bucks. Step ladder, some of them are decent, but some of them are ridiculous, like $20 to get rid of a mattress, $20 to get rid of karaoke equipment. Karaoke equipment happens so often here they have their own line item on the back. So anyway, getting back to the front. We happen to be this first, this first one here on the very top. I've circled it. <laughs> so we are in Oda. Remember how I said we're in Gunma and Oda City. So in Oda, they split it into two parts of Oda. So we're in the top part here. So there's burnable trash days, and then there are recycling days over here. So the burnable trash days are listed here. Burnable items are things like, um, they don't have garbage disposals here in Japan, so you have to throw all your food in the garbage. They have a little mesh collection tray inside your sink. So all the food gets collected into it and you have to empty it out each time into your trash can. Which is horrible because it's not like America where you can put things in a rolling trash can and then, you know, keep it outside until you want to roll it down to the end of the street for your weekly pickup. You have to keep your trash inside your house until it's time to take it outside. Which is disgusting and horrible and I'm glad I have trash cans with lids and everything. I haven't seen any bugs in the house yet, not even spiders, which is strange because America at least has spiders occasionally. So something's working, it must be working, but it's still weird for me to just hold on to my trash like that. I don't like it. But anyways, so food items go in there, anything that's burnable, so paper items and um, you know, basically just food and paper, basically the main... Um, the main things that go inside burnable trash bags. Um, you can cut up pieces of cardboard and put them in there. Anything that's, you know, burnable can go into burnable. Um, like diaper bags can go in there, that sort of stuff. No one wants to recycle diaper bags. Used, used diapers and things like that. All of that goes in burnable. So that's your normal trash. So here they have listed when we can take it out. So on that first line, Monday night and Thursday night come to collect our burnable trash. So you're allowed two bags of burnable trash each time. We're a family of just three, so ours is just one bag. And I do read labels, and I'll show you in a second the symbols that are on everything you have to pay attention to to know how to correctly recycle the item. So a lot of my things, our things, go into recycling. Because, I mean, you could just throw it in burnable, but I'm trying to be as... So, you know, as conscious as I can be about um, being as good as they are about recycling and trash and everything. Um, when you're in Japan, do what the Japanese do, you know? Okay, so that's burnable. Then over here on this section are two different sections. There's non-burnable or oversized collection days. There's a section of non-burnable items, and you put them in a specific bag I have never come across any non-burnable items um, that are specifically non-burnable, but those are things... Well, I have had batteries. Used batteries, um, things like cookware and stuff, 
all non-burnable. Another thing the city gives you, by the way, is this sheet that tells you what everything is, which I'll show you that in a second, too. You get both of these sheets from the government building. So those, for me, come on the first, third, and fifth Fridays. I know, it's a crazy schedule. I don't really do that much. We haven't given away any oversized items or anything like that, so I don't have to worry about that as much. Um, what we focus on here is the recycling and hazardous trash. Hazardous trash is stuff like chemicals, and um, but we do recycling. So for us, that's the second and fourth Friday. Um, so basically, <laughs> you can throw out your burnable trash twice a week on these specific days. So for us, it is on Monday night and Thursday night only that... Well, I guess those are the mornings they pick up. So you would have to get it out there Wednesday night or over the weekend. Those are your two times to take trash outside of your house. And they pick it up Monday morning, Thursday morning. So I actually have alarms set on my phone for when to take out burnable trash and when to take out recycling trash just in case they don't miss anything. And then recycling then is twice a month. So it's only Thursday nights, so I get to take it out tomorrow night twice a month. <laughs> so you have to sit with all this recycling stuff in your house for two weeks before you can take it out. Again, I'm weird, I guess, but I think that that is weird. I don't know. The other page they give you, okay, they break apart what everything is. So these are examples of burnable items. Like I said, diapers, diapers here, food, I guess you can throw away shoes, cassette tapes, that seems strange. Um, non-burnable items, things like a fax machine, rice cookers, pans, umbrellas, those have to go in a specific bag. Oversized trash items are things like bicycles, televisions, and again you get charged for them and that is on the back of that other sheet. Recycling trash, this is all just the recycling. Okay, so they're in specific sections. There's the cans, and you look for these symbols for cans. There are, I can't, okay, so milk cartons have their own special section. I'll show you that in a second. Plastic, other plastic recycling containers, like there's lots of to-go containers from 7-Eleven here. Those go in your main white bag. So this is most of our things that come in grocery go in this section, actually. So that all goes in one big white bag. Um, and then your glass, your bottles, things like that. Um, PET bottles are a whole other section. Oh, they just don't have a picture of PET bottles here. So all of this is recycling. So on, and I'll show you the bags they use. And this is another thing. In America, you can buy whatever gra garbage bags you want. As long as it gets into the pail and they just dump the pail, it's fine. You can have scented Febreze ones if you want, whatever you want. Here you have to pay for specific bags. If you use any other type of bag, they will tag it, write a note on it that says, no, 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 go buy the right bags, and then you have to go buy the right bags. I knew about all this before I came, so I was well-versed in what to do, well, sort of, most for the most part, so I haven't messed up yet, but even other Japanese people mess up. In our building, I've seen people that have just taken um, the trash out in normal grocery bags, and some sign in Japanese is left for them that's basically saying you got to bring your trash back inside your house and organize it correctly. If they see anything that's not right, they will put that bag back and put a note on it so you have to be sure about what you're doing before you throw it out or it'll just come right back to you. And then you have to wait, you know, especially for recycling, you don't want to screw that up because then you have to wait a whole another two weeks. So this is the burnable trash bag. 45 liters, which is their normal size here, okay? I don't know what she's saying, but she's like, look, look, you organize your stuff. Recycle, please. So this is your burnable trash, all your food, and everything here is transparent. The reason for that is so that when they go to pick it up, they can see if you done fucked up. And if you done fucked up, if they see, look, I have props here. If they see a plastic bottle in here, they will tag it and give it to you and say, fix it. Fix it and try again. You know, they need to make sure that you're doing that you're doing it right. So Big Brother wants to know. So that is burnable. All your normal trash. Well, your food and 
the things I mentioned already. Then your recycling trash is just white bag. Yes, I've only found this specific white bag, so you still don't really get your choice. You can get your choice as far as size. Same thing with the burnable. You can have a 45 liter or a 30 liter. I prefer to have the bigger bag because I don't want multiple bags with no lid on them, things like that. So yeah, there's the this is the plastic plastic um, recycling go in this one. So uh, on burnable trash day, I just take it out, throw it in the dumpster, no problem. So we're done with burnable. Now we're gonna focus on recycling. When you recycle. It's, like I said, twice a month, and for our section, it's Thursday nights. I have to get it down there, so they pick it up Friday morning. And when you go down there, there are big bags sort of clipped onto a gated wall where I live. And that's where you put this big white bag full of your normal plastic items that you buy from the store. So, um, sometimes when you have, and I don't have any with me, but you have a peel-back container, that lid is going to say it's plastic. So that lid can go into the plastic, but the bottom might be burnable. So you have to read all the labels to know exactly what to do. So anyway, when you go down, you drop off this big white bag inside those sacks. And then comes the fun part of all the other recycled items have to go, I put them, I separate them into small little bags. And then when I go out there, there's a bunch of bins on the ground, open plastic bins. You have to pour your plastic bag full of cans or bottles or whatever into these specific bins. You have to make sure they get in the right one. This is for glass, this is for cans, which is not in English. So I try to go down um, maybe an hour or two after you're supposed to start recycling just to have other people's stuff there and just copy what they do so I know I'm getting it in the right bins. But anyway, so we'll talk PET bottles first. Um, when you get the bottle, and I've rinsed both of these out, that's what you have to do. You have to rinse your PET bottles out, and let me see if I can find the badging on it. Okay, so I picked this one because it's huge. PET. That's referring to the bottle, of course. This other symbol next to it, I don't know if you can see. I'll show you on this one, too. The other symbol next to it means plastic. So they need you to tear this apart. You can't throw it away as is. So you rinse it out, which I already did. You take off the lid, you take off the label, right, and then the lid and the label go into your recycle trash. A lot of things go in this white bag. This white bag gets very full. Any frozen bags of vegetables I use a lot, after the vegetables are done, you have to rinse out that bag. Plastic bag goes in here. Foil type looking bags go in there too. But these go in that white one. Then this, by itself, naked, goes in your PET bottle. Here's another one. What they do on these ones is, I don't know if you can see it, but you see these arrows here? This is a tear strip they put on a lot of the bottles because they want you to tear it apart. So you take from the tear strip here, and then it's an easy tear-off situation. And then it's empty. Then again, you have to take off the lid, Right after everything you do, you do this. Put these in the white bag, rinse this out, which I've already done, there's a little water left in it. Rinse it out, put it in your PET trash. So every single bottle you buy, you have to do that for. And then for cans, okay? This is the size of their coffee cans. So cute, I'll compare it to my hand. <laughs> it's so cute. I don't know if you can tell how small it is. It's like that small. Um. So this little tiny can of coffee, and it has the symbol there for cans. So that symbol means cans. Gotta be careful. Okay, then this one is interesting because it has two symbols. So one means cans, and one means burnable. Glare from the sun. Anyway, one means burnable here. So what they want you to do you can't just throw the can away like this. And this one, they don't make easy to strip, especially things from America, like Campbell labels. That, well, it's not really from America, but it's like so hard to peel it off. Sometimes I'm sitting here forever just picking off the little pieces. Well, that wasn't too bad. So this then goes in your burnable, the yellow bag, to be taken out to trash. This, I put the lid in and everything, I already rinsed it out. 
you rinse it out thoroughly, put the lid inside, and then that can go into your cans now. So that's just for those sections. Then there's glass, and on glass bottles, I don't have any with me now, I don't get much glass. On glass bottles, you have to take the labels off for those too, or the lids, and then you have to be careful because some of the lids can go in your plastics and some of the lids go back into cans instead of plastics. It depends what the lid is made of, which it all tells you on the label. So now, my least favorite part are um, cartons. So with cartons, they have to be white inside to be able to be recycled, which all of them are, unfortunately. And I would think, I would think, burnable, right? Because it's cardboard box. I don't see how they're going to recycle it. I don't understand. But that's the symbol for cardboard box. They each have their own symbols. And they even tell you how it's supposed to look, right? So, <laughs> so what you need to do is... I've already opened the top completely. You gotta open the top completely. Then you gotta take your handy scissors, okay? Cut down a whole side. And I do this with every single. <laughs> and I have milk almost every day. Serena does. This is Serena's juice box. You gotta cut along the bottom then. It's like, I'm all about arts and crafts, but this is like arts and crafts. That's not fun. <laughs> non fun arts and crafts. So you have to cut it until it's completely flat, all the sides and the bottom here. And then you have to fold it. <laughs> so you fold it in, fold it in, and then fold it in this way too, like this. And then fold up the back on that side so it's completely flat. And then this is how you take it outside in a separate little baggie. And then when it's time for, when this sits around your house, <laughs> I think this might be one of the reasons that they have you rinse it because they know it's sitting around your house for two weeks. So if you have soda or juice or something sticky stuck on it, it's going to make your house smell. It's probably easier for them to recycle too if you have washed it. Um, although I'm pretty sure they washed it again like they would in America for recycling. But So it's not the same as America where you can just do plastics here and cans recycling or put them all in the same recycling bin and then someone else sorts it. They're specific and you have to pull apart your food like I did with that can. But sometimes you'll open up a box the, and then on the box it says, a lot of boxes say burnable and plastic. So the box itself, when you open the item, the box would be burnable. But then inside those items are plastic. So those would go into, again, your white sack. Your white sack is the most full thing for recycling. But then you have to go through all these other, you know, extra things to do. So in, in my mind, I feel like pulling the labels off of these PET bottles are a little much because they're both going to recycling. Whereas with this can of soup, the label gets burned, the can goes into recycling. This one, the label and the cap go into recycling anyway, and then PET bottles go into recycling anyway. So unless they're going to completely different facilities on completely different parts of Japan, I'm not quite sure the reason for that, the necessity to, to go to those lengths. But anyways, <laughs> I know it's like almost a 20 minute video now, but it's crazy. The, the recycling in the trash is crazy here. I have alarms set on my phone for those three different times that I have to go each month. Um, and it's, it, it, it can get daunting, that's for sure. I'm, I'm very careful about what I buy to try to make sure it's as many burnable things as possible. Um, just so I don't to do so much separating and things. But anyways, so that is recycling and trash. In Japan, be happy that you're in America, <laughs> I guess. I'm going to be excited to go back just for, just for that alone. But anyways, so thanks, bye.